Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool, and today's video is going to be the first in a series of videos where we're going to discuss how to test various kinds of sensors. Now, the sensors we're talking about in this video are going to be thermistors. They're typically uh, coolant temp sensors, uh, intake air temp sensors, transmission fluid temperature sensors, uh, primarily used in temperature sensors. Uh, so. A thermistor means simply nothing more than the fact that it is a resistor that changes its resistance value based on temperature. And most applications that you're going to run into are going to be NTC uh, thermistors. NTC means negative temperature coefficient. It simply means that as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. PTC, which would be positive temperature coefficient, uh, would do the opposite. As temperature would go up, resistance would go up. So, uh, but for automotive applications, you're almost always going to run into NTC temperature sensors. So just know that as the temperature rises on whatever you know the given sensor is, the resistance value will almost always be going down. So, uh, these sensors can be tested both with your regular test equipment, a voltmeter, uh, an ohmmeter, and a scan tool. Now, I caution you to not rely too heavily on a scan tool for some of these uh, diagnostic steps. Not that a scan tool is not a good tool to have. I have one. I use it all the time. Most people that do have one use it quite often. It, it's an irreplaceable tool when it's doing the job that it's intended for. But with some of these circuit tests, uh, you want to actually have test equipment on the wires in the circuits seeing what the voltage is. Because all a scan tool can do is hook into the network on the vehicle and act like another module. It sends out a request to get information and it gets the information you know, from whatever module has that information. Well, Firstly, it's not genuine live data because a scan tool will almost always take lowest priority in being given the information. So it's not by much, but it is lagging behind just a little bit. And you can see that in a lot of, uh, if you have electronic throttle control or you look at your uh, throttle position sensor, if you sweep your foot on the, the gas pedal, the accelerator pedal, you'll notice that it lags behind a little bit before the scan tool can update uh, that value on, you know, on the, the list that you're looking under data. So the only true live data is when you're actually hooked into a circuit looking at what the signal coming out is. Uh, and the other reason being that a scan tool will give you the information in its PIDs list based upon what it thinks to be true. And it can only look at voltage. So if you end up running into a problem where you have a bad ground or you have a, a bad power and you're losing voltage on the power side or consuming excess voltage on the ground side, then anything you get, get in that scan tool is going to be a lie, basically, because it's telling you what it believes to be true, but it's not true. Uh, it's, it's information that's false and it can't be trusted if you have a bad ground um, or, you know, like I said, a problem with power. You're not always going to have that. Most often you're not going to run into those situations, but good habits are to actually get into the circuit and test the circuit. So before I take up too much more of the video time, let's talk a little bit about how we're going to look at these circuits and how we're going to test them. So to avoid having to you know print out and try to put up or look at a wiring diagram I simply drew out a small section of what a wiring diagram would look like uh, because I actually printed one off and I looked at it and I, I transferred it over here just so we can look at it on the whiteboard without having to try to zoom in on a piece of paper so I'm going to shift the camera over to get a little closer look at that for you and we'll pick up just one second okay so we've got it shifted over and we got uh, a good look here at you know what this wiring diagram is and uh, this is actually very very simple and I know for a lot of people especially if you don't do this for a living if you don't work on cars and you're not used to seeing this 
This might look confusing, but I promise you it's not. And we'll walk through the basics of why this is very, very simple. Now, you'll need just a basic understanding that when you have electricity flowing in, a, in a, any given circuit, that none of that uh, none of the voltage is going to be consumed by any of the loads until the circuit is complete. Now in this case we see that this right here is our source of 5 volts. Uh, many sensors will work on a 5 volt reference signal. So the computer internally will run that through a resistor and then out of the computer this, uh, this box here represents the computer, in this case, uh, vehicle control module, because I looked at a, uh, a 98 uh, Chevrolet Suburban, I believe is what this came off of. But it will leave the computer and it will come out through the wire to the uh, engine coolant temp sensor, and it goes through the variable resistor in there, and it comes out, it completes the circuit by going to ground. This symbol right here indicates that it went to ground. And once you've gone from your power source do a completed circuit all the way to ground, uh, then that circuit is complete. And both of these resistors, both of these loads, are going to consume voltage. Now, they will consume the amount of voltage uh, that's equivalent to the amount of load they represent in the system. Uh, just for an example, if you have 5 volts and this is 4 ohms and this is 1 ohm, then uh, that, makes, that just makes it easy math. This is going to consume 4 of your volts. This is going to consume 1 of your volts. And like I said before, a computer only looks at voltage. That's all a computer can see and tell. And right here, right after that resistor, is where the computer is going to tie in to look at its signal. So what it is, is it's going to look at the voltage right here. And let's say, just for an example, like we said, that this uh, was a 4 ohm resistor, and that whatever uh, temperature this is at, this is down at 1 ohm. So it would see, okay, uh, this consumed 4 volts, and right here on this part of the wire, it, internal to the computer, it's going to sense that there's only 1 volt left on that line. So it's going to know that if this ground is good and this wire is good, that this right here is only is consuming one volt, and that that means this sensor is at one ohm. Uh, it can it has lookup tables in it. It can determine based on the voltage here what the resistance of this sensor is, and therefore what the temperature is. And that's how it can tell you what temperature it is when these all these do is uh, change resistance and you need uh, all a computer can look at is voltage. That's how it will determine a resistance value and determine a temperature. So when you go to look at this system, uh, if you've got your scan tool hooked up, what a lot of people will do on a system that's like this is they will unplug the coolant temp sensor. Now when you unplug that coolant temp sensor, you have right then immediately broken the circuit. Uh, you will actually break it on both sides. So once this circuit's broken, this sensor is completely isolated. It no longer goes to ground. It no longer gets the power from the computer. So this circuit right here, 5 volts coming down through there, going over to the signal, it goes nowhere. It goes through the wiring harness and it ends right at the connector. It is not a complete circuit anymore. And as I said, voltage will only be consumed in a completed circuit. So now that this circuit is not complete, this 5 volts would be available anywhere. It will be available through the entire resistor that's internal to the VCM. It will be available in the wire that comes out. All the way up to this point right here, you will have 5 volts available because that circuit is broken and it's being fed 5 volts. But since it doesn't go to ground, you know that uh, no nothing is being consumed by this resistor. So if you go out and you unplug it, now this is where I caution you because these aren't always guaranteed tests, but they are quick tests that people will do. If you go out and you just unplug this and you've got your scan tool already hooked up and you see that your voltage goes to 5 volts, in this case that indicates that very likely your voltage your, your voltage is being supplied, 
your sig it's getting through the resistor, even though it's not being consumed, your signal is seeing it, and hopefully it's making it out of the computer. Uh, what you would want to do to verify this is come and hook onto this wire right here where it comes out of the computer and just see if it's being given its 5 volts. If you've got 5 volts with a meter or with a power probe or something there, something that will actually give you a voltage reading. So that's a, a quick test. If you unplug this connector, let's say you're showing you know, 0 volts, whatever the problem is, and you unplug this, you don't see any change and your signal still say, stays at 0 volts, that means that at some point, for whatever reason, before this 5 volts got down there, all the voltage was consumed or this 5 volts never made it to this part of the circuit. Uh, you might be looking at an internal computer problem then. So it's really important that you have these wiring diagrams or access to these wiring diagrams when you're diagnosing some of these. Yes, I know most commonly if you have a, a code for a temperature sensor, you know, out of range or something or a, a circuit performance, then a lot of times you're just going to come and you're going to replace the temperature sensor. And yes, nine times out of ten, you're going to be right. It's going to, you know, uh, component failure is pretty common. But we want to make sure that we're approaching every single di uh, diagnosis with the intent of finding what the actual problem is before we jump the gun and just call it this or call it that. So, if you disconnect this and you come here to the wiring harness, put your meter in there or you put your power probe in there and you find that you have your 5 volts, then most likely you may run into situations where it's not true, but for the most part you have verified that your 5 volt uh, circuit has made it to this leg, it's made it through the resistor because your uh, sensor signal is seeing it, uh, and it's come all the way out to the wiring harness down to the uh, coolant temp sensor. And then you come to the other side of the connector and you test to verify that you have good uh, a good ground on it. You can do that with a power probe, it will indicate whether you have a good ground. You can do that by load testing it, which is a really good idea. You want to make sure that you don't just have continuity to ground, but you can, it can actually carry a load. Sometimes, if this does go straight to a separate ground and not a computer ground, uh, people will take like a headlight bulb or some kind of bulb that's going to draw a couple amps, and they will use that hook into it to use that as a ground. They'll run power to it and they'll ground it through that. And if this ground can sustain lighting a headlight bulb and it doesn't, you know, fade out and go dim or, and it actually does light, then that ground's probably a good ground, especially for the load that's going to be put on it by this circuit. Because these uh, sensors, uh, the one ohm that I said in an example, it's actually very unrealistic. These are almost always going to be measured in the, the thousands of ohms, the kilo ohms. Now, uh, really commonly at about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius, uh, 95 to 100,000 ohms is what you'll see on a lot of these. Uh, but again, don't take my word on that. Always, always, always look up and find the service information so that you know exactly what values you're looking for. The other test for this is once you have this disconnected, the uh, two pins right there on the, the sensor just do a... Uh, a resistance check. Take your ohm meter and measure across it. Now, you'll want a temperature, uh, you know, either a th thermometer or a temperature probe for your meter, something to where you can get on this and see what the temperature is. Uh, a good rule of thumb, and like I said, this is not always a good rule of thumb, is that if you have like an infrared thermometer or a uh, temperature probe for your meter and you're testing at the base where this screws into either a coolant passage or something, typically just because that's exposed to the outside air and the, the sensing element is not, it should be in submerged, in this case in coolant, uh, you're going to see about a 10 degree drop, meaning that whatever you read out here, you want to go with the temperature about 10 degrees above that is what you should be looking at. Uh, on the sensing element, just for a little bit more accuracy, but it's gonna it's gonna be able to you know get you where you can tell if if you've got the right uh, resistance spec or not. So, like I said, this looks very confusing, but this circuit is actually very very simple, and it's very easy to test. Uh, 
there's no reason not to test these. Uh, even if you, you know, have, if it's a little hard to get to it and you've got to tear down a little bit to try to, you know, take a couple things off to get to it. It's, it's completely worth it because if you end up putting this sensor in there, where you're going to have to tear down to get to the sensor anyway. And this way, if you do your testing and you know that when you unplug it, you've got your 5 volts right here and you've got a good solid ground that can sustain a load right here and you say, okay, it's got to be a sensor and you put a sensor in it or you tell, you know, you tell the service writer, you tell your customer, hey, it needs a sensor, you know that you have tested everything you can uh, reasonably. You've done testing to verify, yes, this is what it is. It's not, you're not being like, uh, no offense to the people who work at parts stores, but you're not being like some of the parts store people, like, oh, it's got a, it's got a code for an engine coolant temp sensor. You need an engine coolant temp sensor, because I promise you, if you make a habit of that, you will get burned on it. And it's never fun, because then you look bad in the shop you look, work at, or, you know, if you work for yourself, you just, you end up looking bad. You look like you don't know what you're doing. You're just throwing parts at it, which, honestly, you kind of are. So, in this case, these are the steps you need to really be able to understand this. And like I said, the reason I stress so much of this and trying to get you to understand how these systems work isn't because I just like sitting here and doing this because I could very easily I could title this video um, actually let me zoom back out so I'm not just awkwardly talking over a wiring diagram okay um, now that we're back uh, we've got through that uh, I'll go on uh, finish up my rant a little bit here um, like I've said before the reason that I stress this stuff is not like not just because I want to sit here and go on and on and on about it because it makes the videos longer and nobody likes to sit through a long video but I could very easily just simply tell you hey I could title a video hey you know if you have a 98 Chevy Suburban or Chevy pickup and you have a code for an engine coolant temp sensor uh, just pull the pull the harness off check this wire for that, check this wire for that, and if you've got this or you don't have this, you need to replace the sensor or you need to check your ground. And most of you are competent enough, you could take a test light or you could take something and you could follow the steps that I lined out and you could accurately replace whatever part needed to be done. But the next time you come across a situation, maybe you come across it where the wiring diagram is a little bit different or maybe it's set up the same way but the wires you know maybe they're wired a little bit differently if you understand the theory behind this if you get to where you really understand okay yeah you know i see this circuit here it has to be complete and if i break the circuit then five volts is going to be there once you understand that i don't have to show you for a 2005 ford f-150 or a 1988 uh dodge pickup I don't, I don't have to show you all of those specific ones. If you understand the theory behind how this works, then you can take that and you can apply it to any circuit and you can accurately test these. It's better to understand how electricity works and how uh, these circuits will operate under different conditions than to just be told, okay, stick a test light here and check for this and stick a test light here, test for this. I'm very, very, uh, I'm, I'm very much a, a supporter of why are you doing this and it's so that you can understand this stuff and you can you know you can do your job better if you work on cars or even if you don't work on cars and you just want to understand how to do work on your own car you know that way if one of your friends has this problem you can be like oh yeah I, I know how these systems work because you know I learned so uh, that's the general theme that you're gonna see in all of these videos is I'm going to try to stray away from just simply saying, hey, stick your lead here and stick your lead here, and if you get this reading, it's good, or if it does this, it's bad. I want to make sure you understand how these systems work so that you can always get the right answer by diagnosing it fully and correctly, whether you work on cars for a living or not. No matter what, you've always got something you can learn, and if you took something from this video, great. If not, well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video anyway. Uh, maybe you'll pick up something from the next video. So until then, have a good time, and we'll see you when we come back with the next video.